Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. So we have some announcements, got some books to show, update on my baker's dozen. I got some happy mail who I still don't know who sent this. So if anybody wants to fess up that sent me a set of Posca, white Poscas, and whoever sent me this little cube earth, <laughs> a little cube earth, and it's got little pictures and they're like... Uh, little two inch squares so if anybody wants to fess up with that <laughs> and um, so anyway we ju I just announced when I signed on to, to Ustream this morning I got an update on our um, sign in window that as of August 1st there will be no more free Ustream so it looks like I guess the bulk of us that stream artists that stream on Ustream will be moving over to YouTube Live. Um, the it, I I did click on I didn't go research it a lot, but I clicked on the basic package and the basic package on Ustream will be ninety nine dollars a month. So and that's the, the that's the start. That's the cheapest. I think it depends on how many viewers, how long you stream, and I don't know what else. But I'm not paying even ninety nine. So. Uh, yeah, and I don't think anybody else that, uh, that does our art streams are going to do that either. So I think probably most of us will be moving over to YouTube Live. So we have until August 1st. <coughs> so we'll be... Um, so uh, let, me, let me write that down, Melody. I'm trying to... <laughs> yeah. Um, hang on, guys. I'm making a note here. This is, you know, I am in a live chat, so hang on. Okay, um, so as of August 1st, we'll no longer be over here on Ustream. So uh, hopefully me and my mods and, and our group, we can move over to YouTube Live. We'll have a little bit of a learning curve, I'm sure. But it, there's so many people do it. They do it from their phone. They do it from their webcam. So it can't be too difficult. So we'll figure it out. We'll fi all figure it out together. So, <laughs> and uh, I'll look it up for you, Melody. I'll find you one. I'll find you one uh, later. So, anyway, uh, a few other announcements. Uh, y'all, for those of y'all that know about our Miss Eileen, um, y'all give her extra hugs today. Um, she lost her mom a few days ago. So, if y'all want to give um, our Eileen some extra hugs. And, um, yeah, so I hope everybody had a good weekend. I hope everybody did some things fun. I went out and saw the kids, and, you know, um, they're out of school for the summer. Of course, Cam graduated. Boo, you know, is moving up to um, uh, sophomore. And so we went out and saw them. So went, we all met at the bookstore. Went to the bookstore. And, um, hey, Prisma. So, again, guys, if I'll say it one more time, but if anybody else asks or new comes in, if y'all will relay it in chat, that as of August 1st, we will not no longer be here on Ustream. Ustream is no longer going to have a free service for, I guess, for anybody. But they're, they're, And they said earlier that they're going to move toward business and all that. So, so um, we'll, we'll be moving over to YouTube Live. That's the plan as of now, anyway. I just saw it this morning, so. <laughs> haven't, haven't, haven't had time to, you know, do much else other than just announce it. Um, so, again, I don't know who sent me the Poscas and the Earth Cube, but this is so awesome. I love this little Earth Cube. Little pictures. It's just so, look at that. It's just tiny and so cute. It's just so cute. A little earth cube. So if anybody wants to fess up and tell me who uh, sent this to me. It came in two separate packages. So I don't know if the same person sent it. Or if um, uh, two different people. You had three graduations at a birthday party. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, Julie Topaz. So anyway... Um, <laughs> yeah, Janet. So if y'all are watching this recording, it is a live show on Ustream for at least, you know, until we complete a move over to somewhere else. 
but uh, they they said you got you know if you if you want to keep your videos you need to download. Well, I download all my own videos anyway. I download them to my computer and then I upload anything I want to upload to YouTube. So uh, I have everything I want to save anyway. But just FYI, uh, you sent this to me. You both of them, Eileen. Did you send both of these to me, Eileen? Oh my gosh, girl. I just saw Eileen says she sent this to me. But it came in two different packages, so I wasn't sure. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Eileen, our enabler elf. So. Okay, Melody, I'm sorry. Some people are having chat issues. Well, there's another reason. You know, everybody, you know, different parts of the world have different chat issues. Um. You knew it was Eileen because she told you about the cubes. I know. It's adorable, isn't it? I just love it. Look how stinking cute it is. It's a little earth cube. Now, I, I don't know. How much can I? Should I alter these? Eileen, did you send this to me to alter? This would be a cool book to alter because <laughs> it's so tiny. You know? Do you want us? Maybe we'll do that, Eileen. Should we alter something today out of this book? <laughs> Can't do too much because it's pretty tiny, but it's so cute. It's so cute. Sent you, sent you a book, but I thought it was bigger than that. Oh my gosh! No, it's adorable. It is adorable. So, I think we, do we need to alter it? Yes. Okay, Eileen said yes, we need to alter it. Okay. All right, so a few other updates here. First off, in my Baker's Dozen, y'all know we colored in this last week. Let me move my ring light just, well, it, I just need to tilt it down just a tiny bit just to get the ring light, ring light glare off. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I, I messaged... I messaged Aaron, the author of the book. He's the one that sent it to me. And I asked him some of your guys', you guys' questions from last week. And he answered me. So, a couple things I'll announce. And we are going to color in it again. I, I will show you that I did finish all the Santas in the book. I'm going to flip through that in just a minute. But let me, at, let me answer the questions. Art card collage, too. For our car, yeah, I don't know if I want to tear them out though. I, uh, uh, Jean, I think I just want to work in the actual book, cause wouldn't that be cute? And if we, and if it got fluffy, look, wouldn't that be a a cool fluffy book? Look, wouldn't that be cute fluffy? <laughs> okay, so Aaron, the, the author of the book, um. The colored samples on the back color on the back cover are Wendy's color watercolor illustrations that she published in the actual book for kids. So she has the actual book for kids, which is also available on Amazon. Um, that she col she these are her watercolors. So FYI to Jean, they are watercolors, and these are her actual watercolors. Um, from her book, her kid's book. And then, uh, okay, here comes the cat, as long as he doesn't get on the computer. The, um, the front cover is likewise her original watercolor painting, but it's faded from full color to grayscale in the opposite corner, showing that it's a color book. So, like, it's got the full color here, and it fades. Uh, and that's done on purpose to show you that it is a, has been turned into a color book. Um, and I guess Erin uh, did that. She's, and as far as how long it took Wendy, Wendy, I know she worked on the paintings for over, off and on for over a year using live models. Um, and then you can also go on her, she has a Facebook. Uh, I did follow her on Instagram, and she did comment to me on Instagram, but I haven't gone to her Facebook and asked her any questions. So that is some of the answers. Um, the other thing that he said was, you know, we did testing on this one sheet. 
we tested some supplies on here. And Erin said that the paper, like this test sheet that we did here, it has an, an extra layer of gray inside. And so he said the one thing to note is that all the story text pages are gr colored gray. So sh you should get even less see-through than this page that we tested on. So I'm going to, now I'm still not thinking that a Copic is going to, it got dark again. Hang on, because I moved my light too much. Uh, I'm still not thinking that a Copic is going to not show through, right? Um, all right, got a lot of comments here. No, nothing's as fluffy as a uh, fluffette uh, composition book, Julie Topaz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's a lag in chat, so I have to talk in conversation here on the recording and, and have a, another conversation with the chat. Um, so I am going to test that real quick. We'll just do uh, a little bit of something like here's on this table here, maybe. Let's get a kind of a, maybe a light ground Copic or something here. Let's get a, um, let's see, let's just get a kind of a brown Copic here. And again, guys, I really am not thinking that um, a Copic is not going to bleed through even with an extra layer of gray. You know what I mean, Vern? So let's, uh, let me get my lighting just a little. Nope, that's too bright there. There we go. That should be a little better. Put it next. To, yeah, yeah. And uh, I wonder how many light model she had. I don't know. So I don't know, uh, Jean. So let me just do right here on this. Ta oh, wait. Let's put the uh, black paper behind it because, you know. So I'm just going to do a little bit of Copic right here. And this is just one layer. I'm not trying to do any blending, right? You know, with Copics, you want to blend your colors. But I'm just going to do this little table here. So we'll see what happens. I'm not, you know, oversaturating. I'm just trying to put one layer. So let's see if we can get one layer of Copics here and what happens. Oh, little table down here. Okay. All right, so let's see. Yeah, see, it still bleeds through. Now, granted, it didn't bleed through as much as that, <laughs> but it still bleeds through, and that's that's going to be true of any alcohol markers, right? You know, nothing else really bled through terribly except the Copics. That's the only thing that really bled, bled through just the plain paper. Everything else just ghosted slightly, but um, so, you know, we know. We know that's the way of Copics, right? Or any alcohol markers that they bleed through. So, um, okay, Eileen. And uh, so anyway, I did go through. Oh, and I did ask if I could read the book. And he did tell me I could read the book. So the next time I color in it, I'm going to show you all the Santas. I did go through. Well, I say Santa, St. Saint Nick, St. Nicholas. Uh, I did go through and do all all the sand um, oh, all the Saint Nicks and when the next time I color in it I will read the book because I really want to read the book <laughs> I really want to read the book to you guys uh, I mean if you all want I could read it now but I thought I would read it you know while I was doing a coloring session and then so y'all kind of get the idea but I will show you let me just flip through um, the ones that are supposed to be the actual St. Nick, I did in red and gold, so you can see maybe the gold. Anyways, I got gold on the actual St. Nick illustrate. excuse me, St. Nick illustrations. And anytime it's a cookie, um, that the baker baked, I did it with white, um, yeah, I did try Crayola markers, and they were fine. Here, this is the Crayola Super Tips. They don't go through. I mean, you can barely see it ghosting. So, they're okay. And again, it's like anything else, guys. I mean, I can take I can take the, the uh, Crayola, and let's just see something here. This is just a test here. Here, let's do... Um, Let's find something to do because this is a test sheet. There's a little, looks like a little box or something over here. Let me just color in that little 
box maybe right back here the little edge of this box the trim okay see and you can barely see it ghosting just like here it might be a, it might be a little less now this is from the remember this right here is from the Copic so it, it's going to go through a little. But here's the thing, guys. It's like anything else. When you oversaturate a piece of paper. All right. So now, let me put this behind it again. If I wanted to, you know, really color it, let's just do the whole thing. And I wanted to, like, get it nice and dark. I've oversaturated that. So it's, it's ghosting, but it didn't completely go through. Now here on this white sheet, which doesn't have the gray in it, see it ghosted a little more. It still didn't go through, but it ghosted through a little. So I use my Crayola Super Tip water-based markers on even on um, Create Space paper. You just got to be careful not to, you know, and they don't blend either. It's not like a Copic. You're not going to get a blend, you know, like you do with a Copic or something. Um, but anyway, so there's a little test right there. So I did go through, like I said, and, and did all of the cookies and the St. Nick's. And uh, so if, the, if it was a cookie, I did it in red and white. And if it was actually the St. Nick, I did it in red and gold. So I'm just going to flip through like here. See, he's in red and gold. I can't really get, that's as good as it's, that's tiny, guys. That's tiny. And then here's all the cookies here. And I see I missed one right there. I missed that one. I did all the whole basket full. <laughs> and I missed that one right there. So I got to go back and do that one. And I tried to go through to make sure I didn't miss any, but I did. I missed one. So, again, I went through and get, did all the cookies that were red and white. And I will read the story the next time I color in it. There's a whole tray full there. Color them in. And then this one is... Now, I haven't finished him. I haven't done his beard and his skin and all that. I just did the red and gold. So I got all the red and gold done on his um, robe and his miter. And then this one, I have to add the gold. So I have to do the gold here on him. And, of course, his beard with the blue and his skin. I haven't done that. But I wanted to get all the cookies and really get all the red done here. I wanted to go through the whole book and get all the cookies. So here's some more cookies. So they're just red and white. More shelves of cookies. So it took a while. <laughs> it took a while to get all the cookies. All the cookies uh, iced. <laughs> uh, there's a, in the window there. And then here is the one we did last week for a test. It makes you want to bite the head off of one of the yummy cookies. I know, Prisma. So anyway, so there's our little test. And again, this is on the, it has like a gray to it. Like a back, it's like backed with a little bit of gray. I don't know that it really didn't make too much difference because, you know, the Crayola still didn't bleed. Nothing else really bled through, is going to bleed through except Copics. Copics always are going to bleed through. I know, isn't it cool? So you can get on Amazon and her children's book. That this is what her children's book will look like. And they're all done in watercolors. Um, and because I, that was what we were curious about. Did they color these in, in uh, Photoshop for the sample? But it's actually uh, Wendy's children's book. I mean, the art is Wendy's children's book. Art. Watercolors. <laughs> And that's her actual watercolors there from her children's book. So, yeah. So, I did ask Erin all the questions y'all asked me. Um, and it did take her off and on a year to do this. So, just, you know, y'all see how long it takes to do stuff. 
You know, it takes a while to do this kind of thing. So, and if y'all don't follow any children's book illustrators, um, go find you some. Go find you some to follow. Will Terry has, um, he, you know, he has the SVS school for illustrating. And, um, you know, you can, you can branch off from different uh, illustrators. So, yes, we already know that, Marie. We already talked about it. Yes, Marie, we know. Did you say what to use to color the cookies? Did you say? No, I haven't. Yeah, I use pencil. I'm sorry, Connie. Yeah, that's all pencil. It's all, everything that you saw me color here, except the gold. The gold, um, the gold is gel pen. And yeah, I show, there's a, there's a show where I colored this last week. There's a recording where I colored this last week. Okay. So if y'all have anything y'all want me to say, announce, or talk about, put it in caps so I see it because chat rolls by pretty quick. Good morning, everybody coming in. I missed. All right, so there's the update on that. I wanted to share that with you. And then, like I said, over the weekend, when I saw the kids for their graduation and moving, boo, moving up, you know, in high school, went up and saw them, and we met at Barnes & Noble, so I got, I bought them each a book, and I got myself this one, and these I got on Amazon. So I'm going to do a little book haul. And then if we decide we want to do something from these, then um, maybe we'll play in the, well, this is, you'll see. We'll all read them, or go through them. <clears throat> Thanks for putting in the link there. Yep, Baker's Dozen. It's on Amazon. And you can also get Wendy's children's book with her already colored illustrations in it. Okay. All right. So let's start with this one because this isn't really any kind of a process um, eye candy book. <laughs> And uh, y'all know I had another book that I got uh, the week before um, by uh, Questlove on creativity. And I talked a little bit. I'm still reading that. I'm probably about halfway through that one. I did start a little bit on this one. I, I'm not too far in it. As y'all know, I don't like to read too many books on the same topic. Uh, I usually read, I mean, I'll read 10 different books at the same time. As long as they're not all on the same topic. Like, I wouldn't re want to read the history of the Mayan in, by one author and the history of the Mayan by another at the same time. Uh, I could read the history of the Mayan and the history of the, you know, Incas or something else. But, you know, I don't like to do, I don't like to read the same topic at the same time. So, um, I'll either pick this one or the Questlove one to finish and then go and read the other one. But I wanted, I got it and I wanted to show it to you and talk a little bit about it. So, um... Think like an artist and lead a more creative, productive life. Will Gom Gomperts? Gomperts? So I'm going to read the back and a little bit of info from it. So, yeah. And I'm trying to keep up with some chat at the same time. Which, by the way, if you're just joining us, we will be moving over to YouTube Live within, you know, before August 1st, because that's when we no longer will have for you stream. <coughs> and uh, so just FYI, if anybody else comes in, says they saw the, the announcement, then let them know. We all know. We all know. <laughs> Thanks, Terry, for putting in the link. A romp through art history and the creative mind, full of entertaining anecdotes. And the other thing, too, I, I wanted to say is they cover, well, they cover different artists and how they think. Uh, you know, it has, you know, Van Gogh and Picasso and, you know, all just different artists. And um, so I'll read you all the uh, introduction here in just a second. How do artists think? And what can we learn from them to enhance our own creativity? BBC artist, arts editor Will Gompertz 
seeks to answer these questions in his exuberant, witty, and intriguing new book. Informed by his years of meeting and profiling some of the world's leading creative thinkers, Gom Pertz has uncovered signature traits common among artists and explorers, how we might unlock the same potential within ourselves. And then he tells all the different artists that he, you know, goes through. And uh, he was previously, the author was previously a director of the Tate Gallery and is now BBC's arts editor and the author of What Are You Looking At? The Surprising, Shocking, and Sometimes Strange Story of 150 Years of Modern Art. And that came out in 2012. Um, this one, I think, is 2017. 2000, this one's 2015. So it's the first time I've seen it. I've never seen it. And usually when these kind of books come out, I grab them right away because I love to I love to learn. All right. So let's make sure my chat is moving here. Okay. So um, the contents are artists are enterprising. And then he talks about Andy Warhol, Vincent Van Gogh. And, you know, and he breaks down three or four different artists under each category. Artists don't fail. Artists are seriously curious. Artists steal. Artists are skeptics. Artists think big picture and fine detail. Artists have a point of view. Artists are brave. Artists pause for thought. All schools should be art schools and a final thought. And so that's the chapter titles. And I've only got into, you know, 30 pages. Um, thank you, Limo. And so, you know, I kind of just perused it, and, you know, they've got some illustrations, and he's got big, you know, quotes on some of the pages, and some samples by some of the artists, and, you know, so, okay, I'm just going to read, read the preface, and then, well, maybe the introduction. <laughs> We cannot all paint like Picasso or sculpt like My Michelangelo, but we can all think like an artist. Um, well, let's see. This is going to... So why do we come up with great ideas so easy? hope this book will help you show you how. Okay, maybe we go to the introduction. All right, creativity is a hot topic. It is a subject that's exciting politicians, academics, and wise men and women the world over. They say it's very important, that it will be central to our future prosperity, which is all well and good, but what exactly is creativity and how does it work? And why do some people appear to find it easy to come up with brilliant, fresh ideas while others don't? Is it simply a case of creative types being programmed differently, or does it have to do with behavior and attitude? Um, yeah, I haven't bought that one yet, Annie. I, I, I see, keep seeing it in the bookstore, but I've read, a, I've got a whole bunch of books on um, Da Vinci, but I haven't got that one yet. I know, I, I will eventually. And uh, so it talks about we are all artists, and it does talk about, and I know Jean, I think with me and Jean's differentiation is just semantics. I think we just have different ways of saying, <laughs> because, and like he was saying here, I, everybody is born creative. Everybody has something creative. And depending on a lot of different circumstances, uh, time, practice, education, and we're also not talking about the, you know, the the person that's born coming out of the womb playing, you know, Mozart on the piano or something like that, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but just in general, and he's talking about how um, everybody is born creative in some form or another. And what, you know, and then he goes on and gives the examples of the different artists, how they think, how, how they, um, what, how they develop their styles or techniques, their creativity. And again, I'm only in it, just, you know, I've only perused it. Um, but he gives the example like Andy Warhol, who he was like a marketing genius, if you will. So um, a lot of it has to do with what direction you take your creativity in. And I think I found that with the Questlove book, too. A lot of it has to do with how much you love what you do. And he's also talking about how you think. If you have confidence in what you do, how much, you know, and there's a lot of other factors. But everybody has some form of creativity. What you do with it and how you think about it, where you go from it, from there, um, is going to depend on person to person. 
and so he he breaks it down by the artist and what they did uh, what they did with their creativity how they developed it and made it into something you know so you like the book talks thanks Diana I love talking about books I should probably have a well I wouldn't want a separate booktube channel uh, I just put it all on the same thing because you know our show um, it, it's my or my YouTube channel it's all it's everything we do whether we talk about books color books mixed media art journals art supplies it's all in the same vein so if I did any kind of uh, book chat it's all going to be on my same channel but I do try to put everything in playlist so that it's easy to find you know if you can't find uh, something in one playlist you should be able to find it in another because I will link multiple uh, things like if I do a mixed media art journal that'll be in two different playlists you know, it'll be under our journal and it'll be under mixed media. So you should be able to find anything we talk about here fairly easily uh, by looking in my playlist, which I think I have about 15 playlists, something like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like that one too, Limo. Yeah. So anyway, Think Like an Artist, I did get this one at Barnes & Noble. Uh, I had a, I think it was 10% off, an additional 10% off your total purchase, which I bought the kids some books too, and I already get a 10%, you know, with my card, my membership card. So we got some discounts on them. Um, yeah, I always try to get, when they have coupons, also have some coupons, some individual coupons that came in the mail. So, you know, there's always coupons and if you, especially if you um, sign up for any emails and stuff like that, you'll get them, you know, more times than you can use. You know, I get Michael's coupons every, literally every single day. <laughs> and they have an app, too. So if you have the Michael's app, you'll get your coupons. You know, there's always coupons and sales. And Father's Day is coming up. There'll probably be another 15% off something on, you know. So just look for those um, look for those coupons and deals, especially if you buy you know a hardback or something. So yeah, I'm 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 really enjoying this. These two I ordered, and again let's prop that up just because this is so shiny. Let me put this book behind it so it just props it up just a little bit. It's still good. I'm gonna have to move it back just a little here. So I got these two books off of uh, Amazon. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps. I'm going to take another sip of coffee here. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we're good. Eileen sent me, if y'all just join me, Eileen sent me this little earth cube. <laughs> and uh, I think we might do a little bit of altering in it because it's, it's even smaller than my art cards. I mean, this is like, I think it's like two by two. Let me get a rule. Yeah, it's like a little, maybe just two and a quarter by two and a quarter, I think. So, <laughs> isn't it so cute? Look how cute this is. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm enamored by the cuteness. And it came on perfect day while we're talking books. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with this one. This is the Collage Ideas book. And I have to say, when I, when, I, when I ordered this, I did not know it was going to be this small. Not that it really matters because it's the information in it that I was really in, interested in. Yeah, Twinchy book. Yeah, Terry. I know, isn't it an adorable button? So anyway, um, I didn't know this book was this small. I usually, you know, look at the, the dimensions that the uh, description gives me. But I had ordered this, and I, for some reason I just assumed that this was going to be the same size book as all the others, right? But it's not. But that's okay, because it's still got all the information in it that I thought would be in it. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, so it's the Collage Idea book, Alana Moore. Collage allows your creativity to run riot. It lets you juxtapose disparate elements, styles, and media against each other and create something entirely novel, bizarre, arresting, beautiful, ironic, or unsettling. Old and new can be fused together and digital and handmade can be combined. What you can create with collage knows no bounds. 
the this little book is full of big ideas from contemporary collage artists to inspire you to think differently with a new idea on every page you will discover fresh ways of tackling the medium to create work that is original and exciting so um <laughs> Anyway, I just, I was attracted to the cover. Uh, okay, Jean. And this is, it did come out, I think both of these are 2018. Jean, I'm going to record this. This is, a you know, a watercolor book because I, I thought you would like to see this one especially. But Jean has to run to the dollar store. <laughs> okay, so anyway, and, and congratulations on your, um, sale Jean had an indoor yard sale because it was raining I guess so she had to have an indoor a uh, yard sale but she apparently did fairly well on her indoor yard sale she's downsizing and getting rid of clutter and um, at perhaps at some point moving so uh, yay Jean yay on you <laughs> I know it is a cool cover isn't it so again this is 2018 and um, there are different types of, it's broke out by different things, style, technique, application, inspiration, I'm trying to see all the different um, combining media, and then like here's more, more um, then they'll have another style number six, creating texture number six, technique number seven. Um, so it goes, uh, it goes back and forth between the different elements and from what I can see, cause I'm going to read the titles here, but from the, um, like application number three, inspiration number four. So it looks like it has style, technique, application, combining media, and there's another inspiration. Te combining techniques. I think those may be the five main topics. Combining techniques, application, combining media number 11, inspiration, application, style. Yeah, so those seem to be the five uh, themes. Um, okay, Jean. Okay. And then the contents, I guess I could just flip through. I'll just flip through. Um, has an introduction and it, and it has what I just read in the back uh, well you know what let me read the well I don't know this is kind of a lot but I'm gonna read it to you anyway then we'll do a quick flip so here's the contents other than like for instance add pencil that's the first one add pencil and that is under combining media number one add pencil create a retro feel paint your own landscape make a book diorama Repurpose your old artwork. Make a paper pamphlet. Create art from junk. Invent hybrid creatures. Pin it. Play with paper. Experiment with embroidery. Make a cut and paste scrapbook. Go all out or ornamental. Reimagining rubbish. Give your work a modern twist. Okay, let's just go to reimagine rubbish, like 34, page 34 to 35. And that's under style number two. So that's showing one of the styles. And uh, so here again is reusing, you know, old papers and yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is an eye candy book too. Uh, I love the first one here. This one right here. Look at this. Create a retro feel style number one. And look, I love that. You know, I love me some planets. <laughs> um. And they're saying that this could be a scene out of a 1950s cult B movie. And uh, so then it gives you a little write up, gives the artist. This one is by, um, oh, this one's called Lunar Beach. Oh, the artists are all listed in the back, I think. Does it, it mention the artist inside the, yeah, okay. Karen Lynch. Karen Lynch um, did this collage here. And it's called Lunar Beach. Isn't that cool? See, that's, you know, that's my kind of thing right there. Okay, where was it? Okay. Uh, give your work a modern twist. Create an urban portrait. Weave surreal narratives. Switch context. Reveal hidden secrets. Combine analog and digital. Collage fine art. Monoprint a collage. Bring pattern into your work. Create with found materials. 
get inspired with paper, build rich textures, be brave with color, add paint. And see that, like the add paint, that'll probably be under one of the um, how-tos. Let's go 62, 63. 62, 62 and 63. Add paint, which is combining techniques, number five. So here is Suzanne, Susanna Rain Haddits. Bold and bright animal artworks incorporate a striking combination of paint and paper collage. So she uses paint and paper, which y'all know we, we love to do that too on our altered books. and um, Yeah, Beach with a View. <laughs> yeah, Terry. So, so you see that it has just a, a little paragraph on each of the pieces. And, um, yeah, okay, so after add paint, embellish with stitching, experiment with texture, revisit your work over time. Let's look at that one, 68 and 69. So here is, uh, oh, and it talks about the three different paintings here. These are by James Reed, R-E-A-D, Reed, James Reed. And, um... So he revisited his old artwork and re revisited it. Um, use mixed media, create a dynamic collage. Mix vintage and contemporary, create a fantastical world. Make sketchbooks. Let's go to that one, 78 and 79. I'm just picking, and I'll do a little flip through here. Make sketchbooks, and that's inspiration number six. The dog one reminds me of Debbie Ed's work with napkins and animals. Yeah, yeah, it kind of does, Button. Um, so this one is inspiration. I said make sketchbooks. Eva McGill Oliver's fills her collage sketchbooks as part of her creative mental warm-up process. I do that because it's in quotes. She says, I begin by making marks and line work that I have either mentally recorded or that instinctively feel right to me. I am a big fan of using a variety of materials. All my collage is done using anything from inks, pencil, pens, spray paint, and watercolor. After it is dry, I cut out the shapes and drawings I like and begin to try to arrange and rearrange in unique and dynamic ways. Eva's major inspiration is the natural world. I am constantly using and drawing from its ever-changing color palettes, textures, and lines. It never ceases to evoke beauty and interest, and I strive daily to incorporate its dynamic evolution into my work. And so she's talking about, you know, she'll draw and, and then she'll cut those out. I call it deconstructing a sketchbook where you have a sketchbook and you like something in it. You just cut it out and use it. I call it deconstructing. But she has nice, um, she has nicer ways of saying it there. But there's hers. What do you use as my art? Th this right here, my table. Um, my table here is just a folding table. It's one of those plastic folding tables. I actually have three of them in here. And I think I'm going to give Cameron my drafting table. So I'll replace my drafting table with it. Because it's flat. I can't really use a drafting table because of the angle. Everything I do needs a flat surface. And even though I have my drafting table just at a barely slight angle. You know, the drafting table can, you know, he'd get more use out of it. Um... But, because right now it's just, hold, my drafting table just holds stuff. It's just like a table, it's just like a holding table, because I don't really use it anymore. Because um, with streaming and everything, I have to have a flat surface. So my table is just one of those plastic topped folding tables. And I have three different ones in here in three different sizes. And I cover it with, usually I just have black craft paper on here. See, let me show you here. See, I usually just have black craft paper, but I found this piece of uh, paper here at Hobby Lobby, so I just bought, of course, you see, I've already inked all over it and everything. I mean, it's just, <laughs> so one day I, um, and at the more paper I add on top, I just, I just, um, you can see the shine right here. It's just uh, packing tape. And I just cover layer and layer and layer. So when it gets really bad, torn, like my uh, black world, the world I had under here, the space world with the black paper, with the stars and planets, it started tearing. You know, you cut something and it starts to get a tear. 
you know, and I, you really can't put packing tape on the, your area that you stream in because it leaves a shine. And just speaking of that, just my show just got really dark. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, there's probably about 20, 25 layers at this point on this table. So you can't just use the plastic top, table top is bumpy. It's nubby. So you got to put something on it. So I think I started with like two, two layers of black, a roll of black craft paper that I get at Michael's. Uh, I've also used a roll of the shipping paper, you know, the one that I do the art scroll animals on. Um, so, or whatever. And all I do is just keep continuously piling up, uh, taping down fresh paper in my screen area. Um, have you worlds? Wor worlds on worlds on that table yes exactly terry there's there's like i think i did a little cut a little v cut in one one time and there was at that time 16 17 layers and i know i've added more since then so there, to answer your question that's the tables they're just folding tables i have one six foot one here that i'm working on and then off to the side here uh to the side here touching here's this one then I have another one right here that's like a four foot table then behind me I think it's four or five foot table behind me and then off to my side over there under my Mona Lisa tapestry Jean made me that's where my um, drafting table is which when if I give that to Cam I'll put another four foot table under there so that you know I've got tables all around so I can move things around and uh, what? Uh, where are you going? Oh yeah, okay, right. The car, get the car. Okay, sorry. Habster was just telling me he's got to go get the um, emissions on the truck. So anyway, he was whispering to me. I couldn't understand him. <laughs> uh, Dee Dee, maybe hi and all. Uh, maybe try the cra try the Crayola markers on what? Chatty Natty. Um, I missed something. Uh, I don't know what you want me to try the Crayola markers on. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, collage ideas. Just put it in caps and all, because there is a lag in chat. So, um, if you you know when when you're streaming, there's at least a 30 second delay, sometimes more, depending on the different people servers around the world. It can be 45 seconds, sometimes up to a minute lag. And uh, so by the time I say something and then they're answering or I'm answering their questions, there's a delay. So um, somebody's asking me on try the Crayola markers, but I don't know on what. So put it in caps, guys. Okay, so let's see, where were we? Um, make sketchbooks. Tell a story. Stitch it. Start collecting ephemera, add narrative, define a color palette, make a portrait, create hand-pulled prints. And then, you know, we do that with jelly, jelly plating. I'm not sure what they're using here. Let's go. 92 and 93. Create hand-pulled prints. Paula Zinsmeister hand pulled prints. They were made by um, okay, so they're they're using actual real printing. You know, we're not they're not using a jelly print here. <laughs> uh, okay, um, let's keep going here with the topics. Where's the uh, cut and tear painted paper, work with wool and felt, make analog art, try free creativity. It's in quotes. I'm not sure. You know, I haven't read all this. Um, think of layering meaning, create encaustic effects, color by numbers with felt, use stamps and stencils, be a graffiti artist, make paper craft collages, paint flora and fauna, get structured, cut and portrait cut into por portraiture collage with ceramic shards be a modern day old master create textures and patterns add another dimension incorporate real objects invent magical vintage worlds 
embrace the handmade, experiment with image transfers, create imagery beans, beans, B-E-I-N-G-S, beans, transform the mass produced into the unique, let's look at that, 138 and 139. I'm just kind of picking some random ones. Okay, 138 and 139, transform the mass produced into the unique. Every day, ubiquitous material can be given a new lease of life in your collage creations. Spy by Thomas Spears was constructed from material that is reproduced on moss wallpaper. Wallpaper is something is something that is used to decorate or cover an otherwise bare wall. Multiple people can have the same wallpaper, the same aesthetic choice. The wallpaper sets a tone, a time period, styles change and aesthetics go in and out of fashion. The wallpaper the wallpaper marks time periods it represents in a way something familiar with something ordinary and comfort. A comfort. The two figures in Spy are made out of both traditionally cut and pasted collage as well as a process called image transferring, where a photocopy of the original image is transferred onto the piece through a chemical process. Thomas has also added gold leaf on this collage. So, and you know, if you ever can come across some place that has like peeling wallpaper, abandoned places where you can peel off any abandoned, sorry, hubster's going in and out of the garage. That's a that's an everyday thing, you know, when it goes in and out. Um, uh, peeling wallpaper as a base for your collage. Hey, Susan, anybody else popping in? Thanks for being here. Um, and image transfers, um, I, I would recommend if you want to, if I can put my hand on it though, let's see. Um, I'm looking for. Uh, hang on. Let me see if I can find it. Collage. Okay. I'm th I can't remember which of these two books. I'll look through them both for you. Um, Claudine Helmuth's Collage Undiscover, I mean Collage Discovery Workshop Beyond the Expected. And this was her first one, Collage Discovery Workshop. She taught, she has all kinds of techniques in one of these for image transfers. So we'll, I'll show you, I'll go back to revisit these here in a minute. So if you are interested in doing different types of image transfer, inkjet, um, gel medium transfers, in one of those books, one of these two books, maybe both, she talks about how to do those. So if you, you know, those books are a little older. And, uh, okay, so let's continue on with the, t the titles. Create image, oh, we said that, transfers, transform the mass produced, okay. Make a cell portrait, create shapes and outlines, take a fresh look at collage, make modern hieroglyphics, play around with paper, build your own trophy wall, create floral body art, use salvaged wooden offcuts, design a triptych, simplify your landscapes, transform an existing book. Oh, we got to look at that one. Collage using textiles, become a junk junk scrapaholic, create puzzles and become a magpie of media. So let's go by uh, transform an existing book 160 and 160. See, I haven't looked at all this guy. Just got these on Saturday and then um, my free time yesterday, I worked in the Baker's Dozen finishing up the uh, well almost finishing up all the all the uh, red clothed Saint Nick cookies and Saint Nick himself so I haven't had a chance to read this yet uh, I did do a little bit of reading in this one okay so transforming an existing book inspiration number 13 Take an existing book and transform it into something very personal. Artist Lisa Koken finds a book that interests her, either for some element of text, image, or marginalia, or for the book of the or for the look of the book itself. When she sets about ever ever oh well, anyway, she changes it. <laughs> and uh, so it's like altering altered books. You know, we do altered books. Y'all know what an altered book is. And uh, so here's her samples here. Every artist just has like um, one or maybe two pages. Do they? Oh, only one. 
But anyway, so there's her altered book. Okay, so um, the other one I want to look at was Become a Junk Scrapaholic 164. Then we'll kind of do a little flip. And here, this kind of reminds me of Seth Apter. Doesn't this look like kind of like Seth Apter, the um, very altered vintage look? And this is Lori Hines. Her decorative collages are made from abandoned items that catch her eye in a trash heap or while walking through dilapidated industrial areas. I am a junk scrapaholic. I find exquisite beauty in the patina and scars of time, use, and disuse. Abandoned anything is my idea of heaven. And so, again, hers are more, you know, it's more three-dimensional. And uh, so, yeah, so let's just take a little peruse through. I'm not going to, obviously not going to read every page, but we'll do a little, <laughs> we'll do a little flip through. Um, but I did read all the titles. Create a retro feel, paint your own landscape, <clears throat> repurpose your own artwork. Here's another repurposing your own what you know if you let, say you drew a giraffe you like the giraffe but you didn't like it the background it was in well cut the giraffe out and put it on something else you know that's uh we do that all the time with deconstructing our journals if you're brave enough to deconstruct your journals i am i'll deconstruct a journal in a heartbeat but you know you got to be brave you can't be afraid to cut up something even if you don't like it if you don't like something at least cut it up and make some art cards out of it <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, artist uh, APG. So don't uh, don't be afraid to cut up your own artwork. So yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of flip through. Here's inventing hybrid creatures. So again, it, the book is smaller than I thought it was gonna be. It'd probably stay right about here so that y'all can see. Um, it's smaller than I thought. And here's some surrealism. I love surrealism. Y'all know I love me some Dolly. Um, so, anyway, it's an awesome book for, if nothing else, ideas starting off points, you know? I mean, the book isn't so that you can create this. It's not a step out, you know? It's not like, okay, so here's, here's how to make this. That's not what this is about. This is about being brave with color. <laughs> you know, I know it's a good and if the book was twelve ninety nine. Of course, you know you get cheaper on Amazon. I mean, I, I'm sure I didn't pay twelve ninety nine for it. You know, and then you've got Prime, free shipping. You know, there's perks. <laughs> but just so you know that you you know that's the that's the retail price on it in the states in the states. Mix vintage and contemporary. And there's that make the sketchbook one we looked at. Here's some tags. I know, isn't it a cute little book limo? So to me, it's totally worth um, $12.99. Or less, you know, depending where you get it. Stamps and stencils, graffiti, and you know, you can, as long as you're uh, not sensitive to spray paint, you know, of course I never spray paint anything in the house. If you want to spray paint anything, go outside. Don't spray paint your studio, <clears throat> Blade. <laughs> uh, okay, so be a modern day old master. So anyway, it's just got lots of different techniques, application, combining, inspiration. What was the other one? Style. You had five different, um, five different subtopics that went with the title. Like this one is application number nine. Take a fresh look at collage. So, you know, even if you just want eye candy or if you want some inspiration, I want to read each one of these. I want to see how the artist did each one. You want to, you know, learn from them. Not that you're going to copy this. You're not going to necessarily make this, you know. I mean, there's people that teach you how to do exact things. Like, for instance, I said this looked like Seth Apter. Seth Apter has step-by-steps. 
on how to do that kind of thing. You know, so if you, I want it for the inspiration of the creativity and the ideas of how to do things, not so that I can make that exact collage. You know what I mean? And then at the very back, it has the little profile or the the name of each artist and their website. So if you want to visit more of their artwork, um, each one has their website listed under that individual create uh, creation. So this is the collage ideas book, and I know Pacola is going to be saying, make sure you put this under the idea in the Society of Idea Collectors. <laughs> She's always giving me good tips. Thank you, Pacola. Pacola is our newest mod. And, and it's, speaking of mods, if my mods, you know, are want to, when we move over to YouTube Live, if you're just joining us, you stream. Uh, there was an announcement on the Ustream opening page this morning that said as of August 1st, there will be no more free Ustream. So I'm assuming most of us are going to move over to Ustream Live. Um, so if you want to save any of your videos, you got to download them before then because you won't. Ha they're going to be gone. They'll be gone, people, as of... <laughs> as of August 1st. Of course, that's not a problem for me. I download all mine anyway, but just FYI. So we will be moving over to YouTube Live. I'll probably do a few tests, and talk to some people that do it. And, you know, I've done Google Hangouts with multiple people, multiple artists, that kind, but I've never done a YouTube Live myself, just like, you know. But it can't be too hard. People do it from their phone, for goodness sake. So, you know, it can't be too hard. <laughs> so, we'll be moving over to doing YouTube um, sometime before the two months is up. And you can't get rid of the mod, <laughs> Julie Topaz. She said, you can't get rid of this mod just by moving platforms. <laughs> you just put this book in your cart limo. I know. It's just so, it's so inspiring. Even, you know, to me, see, the thing about stuff like this is even if I wasn't a collage artist, this would be fascinating to me because of the thought process. That's why I like books like this. I love books on creativity and how to think, you know, different ways to think about things and to look at things and how other artists think and look at things. So, you know, um, uh, Questlove, that's in my other room. Hang on, because I'm still reading it. Let me go get it. Hang on. are all sitting outside there. Um, Questlove, this is the one I got um, a couple weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago. I guess it's going on two weeks. And he's a musician. And he talks mostly about music and the thought process and the creativity and the inspiration and all that with, uh, with music. But I'm not a musician. I can't sing. I don't play an instrument. But it's the, it's the process. It's the way to think creatively. It's the way to look at how other uh, cre creatives think. That's, that's what I love about it, you know. So, um, I know Pacola, I know Pacola just reminded me that I had eight more subbies and I'll, ha I'll have 20,000. Thank you guys so much. And speaking of YouTube and, um, and the subbies and all that, I will be doing, remember I said I want to do a book giveaway the first week of every month and I'll, d I'll do it on a Wednesday. The reason I'll do it on a Wednesday because that gives people the rest of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I end it Saturday night. So it gives everybody four days to comment. Uh, any lot more than that, and I, I can't keep up with it. Because that usually ends up being a couple hundred people that I have to keep up with too. I think the last one was 300 people commented. And I print them all out. I want to be as fair as possible in the giveaways. So I print them all out. And then I do a random.org based on the printout. So that's about all I can do as one person doing a monthly giveaway. Which that's what I want to do. Is a monthly book giveaway. But it'll be on the Wednesday. It'll be on a Wednesday. But anyway, so yeah, thanks, Pacola, for yeah noticing. I have eight more subbies, and I'll have twenty thousand. So, thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. I know. Thanks, guys. 
so that's a there's that's the one the one I'm in process of reading but I did read you know I read about 25 30 pages and this one just to get a feel for it um, and we already we already talked about that okay so the collage ideas book Alana Moore again be aware it's not look how little it is it's a small book and and I'm sure the dimensions are on Amazon I'm sure it tells you the dimensions I just did not pay attention to the dimensions um, you know I was thinking it was just going to be a, a regular size art type book but it doesn't matter to me because again it's the information in it that I'm interested in um, it's not like this is a step-by-step -step where you're going, what? I can't see that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and, and somebody else mentioned that too. Random commenter. Um, is that an app you add onto your YouTube? How do you, well, we'll have to talk later, APG. Somebody else mentioned that too. Um, thanks, Bunny. Yeah, um, said that she's uh, streamed on YouTube Live and it's easier. Yeah, it can't be hard. Everybody, now do you use your phone? You use your camera, right, Bunny? You don't use your phone. Some people do live on their phone and, uh, and some do it on their webcam. I plan on using the webcam so that I can have um, my uh, webcam options. So... Anyway, we'll see. Well, it'll be a it'll be a learning thing. This is five by uh, five and a half by six and a half. I was going a five by five. I'm thinking of a anyway movie. Anyway, five by five. Um, in the pocket, five by five. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had a alien. Uh, was alien number two, or it was alien number one. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Random dot or same. It is it's by random dot org. It's the same folks that do it. Okay. And is it just an app that you attach to your Oh thanks Pacola. Pacola's putting the link to my YouTube. Thanks guys. Yeah, it'd be nice to get off of here and have those eight subbies. <laughs> um I have OBS, but I from what I understand you don't need OBS to do live. Uh, I'll ask Bunny if that's the case. Apparently live, you just go live. But I don't know. I haven't done live. I've only done Google Hangouts where it's multiple, like me and multiple artists are in a, in a you know, in a thing and it's, it, it's broadcast. You don't need OBS for that either. At least the last time I did a Google Hangout, you didn't need OBS. So I don't think you need OBS um, for live. So you use an iPad bunny? Okay. Yeah, because I want to use my webcam so I have my controls. But, um... Okay, so let's finish up with our book. I know we're all trying to, we're all talking about the uh, move over to live instead of Ustream. But thank you Ustream for eight years of awesomeness. We can't really complain you know, I mean, they're a business. They got to do what's best for them. But, you know, I'm saying thank you to Ustream because we all have been here eight years. Uh, eight years is a long time. <laughs> going, oh, I'm going on eight years. I think Paula, Blade, they were full, eight, full on eight years. I'm close to eight years. And, uh, you know, it's been awesome to be able to stream for free um, for all these years and to be able to... Um, be able to uh, chat with everybody live. I don't know who Omas is, Bobo. I don't know who that is. Yeah, for multicams. Yeah, oh yeah, OBS, and I think uh, uh, CBC Heather. She uses a different program for multicams. Yeah, and maybe we get to that eventually. Let's just get us let's just get us live first. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so we let me keep moving on here. So I want what I wanted to say about this though is cuz they we mentioned in here image transfers. So let me come back over here. Uh, these are older books that I've had. This was uh, Claudine Helma's first book. I'm sure they're still available. Um, 
this is the North Light. I think they're both North Light books. Yeah, both North Light books. And um, um, I'm not sure. But uh, Bunny, you said that it's difficult reading as a black background. You should be able to change your black background. That's usually a day-night switch that you can switch over. I don't think you have to have your chat on black background. You can change that. Whether you're on your iPad or, of course, I'm on, you know, it, it's white chat for everybody else. <laughs> if you're having, what I'm saying is if you are reading your chat on your iPad, there should be, just like on your phone, like on Twitter, for instance, there's a day-night switch. And that's usually on all chat programs. They will have, um, yeah, I'm going to show them again, Eileen. There is, let me just show you on Twitter, for example. Let me go to my settings. Okay, so here's my Twitter. There's the day. There's a little moon down there. You can change it to black. So you can have black or white background. It should be as simple as that. So if you don't like your black background on your chat, you should be able to change that button. I mean, um, but bunny. Okay, so this one came out in... This one's from 2003, and this was our second one, and this one was 2000, let me find it, 5. So this one's 2003, this one's 2005. Um, this one has more technique things, I think, if I remember. It's been a few, maybe a year or two since we brought these out. Well, we've shown them a few times here and there when we brought out collage or talked about some technique or something. You're welcome, Bunny. You're welcome. I just didn't want you to be in the dark if you didn't have to be. <laughs> I know when I used, uh, um, when I was on uh, other chat programs way before I was on Ustream or YouTube or anything, there's always been things you can change the color background, the type, the text uh, colors. Now here, we don't have all those, all, all those options. But someplace like uh, maybe Twitch or some, something like that, they may have um, color, you know, you can change the font color, the font itself. Um, so I think it just depends on, but I know you can do the backgrounds pretty easy on everything. And if you're on your iPad and you're seeing a black background, you should be able to change that to white. So... Okay, Collage Discovery Workshop. This one, like I said, was 2003. And I'm thinking, we were talking earlier, if you're just joining us, we were talking about image transfers. Um, and so I'm thinking, the, yeah, here it is, making image transfers. So in this book, she has creating backgrounds, making image transfers, having fun with beeswax, antiquing found objects, experimenting in collage, creating miniature assemblages. Uh, playing with composition and storytelling with collage and remember this is 2003 okay and uh, she so I'm going to go to chapter 2 with the image transfers page 32 because that's what we wanted to address and she has this is where I the just the book that comes to me readily of a, a multi, multitude of different types of image transfers and uh, I'm sure there's some of the other books that we all have that have it as well. This is just the one that came to mind. Um, heat transfer onto glass. Heat transfer on wood. Caulking using, um, you know, your caulking transfers using like, uh, you know, your spackling, like your wall spackle. Um, and then she kind of does little different things on that. The whole she has step outs on the whole thing. Contact paper transfers, and we've shown um, we've shown how to do. And maybe she talks about that one in here. I thought it was in here as well, um, where you'll you can take a magazine image. Let me let me let me do that real quick for you, just because in case somebody doesn't know how to do this. Let me uh, and it has to be a magazine. It can't like be a book. Okay, so here, let me have my, here's my, uh, our study, drawing study book. The only, it's the only, it's the only fashion magazine I have. This one's kind of old, too. I should invest in a new one. 
This is from 2015. It still has the stuff we want to do in it. Um, and some magazines are better than others. So let's find something like, okay, let's just use her dress for an example. Okay? <laughs> All right. So what you do is you just take some packing tape or contact paper, anything, you know, like this. Okay, so I'm going to put that right on her dress. Let's just, now I'm going to just tear this whole thing out. Now I hope this one works. I mean, uh, it should. <laughs> I've done it before with Vogue's and Fashion Magazine. Okay, so I put a piece of packing tape right over her dress. Okay. So now what you want to do is really burnish it down. Let me find my, where's my bone folder? Where are you? Where are you, bony? Where are you? <laughs> where are my bone? I've got two or three bone folders. I can't seem to find a one. It's in here in my spinner rack somewhere. Well, I got this. This is one of my old uh, basic gray rub-on thing tools. With a, it's got something flat on the back. So you really want to burnish it down really well. You really want it burnished, like I can't stress that enough. So now let's just cut this out. Let me, where's my scissors here? <laughs> you like the beeswax transfer always turn out great. I don't think I've ever done the, well, I can't say I, I don't know. I don't know that I have or not, Eileen. If I did, it's been, it was back in 2003. Um, okay, so anyway, so I'm just going to take this now what i have to do now is i'm gonna have to go and run this under uh well do i have i yeah okay i'll do two things first off i've got to go run this under some it doesn't have to be boiling hot water but what you have to do is wet this paper so i'm going to go and and get this wet just take a second like with some hot water and then i'll bring a little bit of water in here and we'll do this real quick and then we're going to look at this book too <laughs> All right, so hang on, guys. Let me get a couple paper towels. I know I'm going to make a mess. Just got to show you this because it's really cool. All right, so hang on. I'll be right back. You really want to do it like in a full bowl. You really want to do it like in a full bowl of water. I just got a little thing here. So I, I ran it under hot water, right? Here's the image I want to have. And what you got to do is just, you peel off, you just rub off, and you got to kind of keep getting it wet so that it stays clean, right? So you just kind of keep rubbing off the paper off the back. Just get it wet. Keep rubbing off the back paper. Like that. Let me clean it off. And what you've done is you've transferred and it's like um, transparent. Let me get something to put it on here. Well, you can see it there. So it's like a, it's like the the image the ink has transferred over to your packing tape. See how it's all, now it's on the packing tape. Can y'all see that? So now you can glue that down on anything. And you've got a shiny sees through transfer. Yeah, soak it. Yeah, exactly. So can y'all see that? And it's, it's actually stuck on the tape. Now, the tape is no longer sticky. The stickiness of the tape is what pulled the ink off of the magazine. So the tape is no longer sticky. There is no sticky. You have to glue that down yourself. Because it's the tape 
that pulled off the ink. Yeah, I know, right? So just FYI, that's how, and you can do this with flowers, you know, fl any kind of floral or all, your abandoned. Well, it doesn't work as good. It doesn't work as well with uh, books because that ink doesn't come off easily. Throw that in the thing. Uh, book books um, don't work as well as magazines, and it probably depends on the book too. But magazines, the, the ink is just comes off really easily. So there we go. So there's your magazine image transfer. Okay. Let's move that out of the way. Just take a little, that was just our little rabbit trail sidebar there. All right. So anyway, that is Collage Discovery Workshop. And her second book, again, was Collage Discovery Workshop Beyond the Unexpected. New techniques using color, personal imagery. Have y'all recognized Claudine's style here? She would take photographs of people. This is like an actual person. And she would turn their photos into little vignettes. Into little um, scenes like this. So this would be like a real person, and maybe that person had birds, or, you know. Bye, Jamie. Uh, Jamie. And so that's, you know, Claudine's style. And, uh, and I haven't followed her for some years, so I don't really know what she's doing these days. But I did buy all her books, and even a scrapbook book thing that she had come out after this. So, anyway, she has some image transfers in here. Let me look at it again. Let me look at the technique she has here. Using printmaking. So, I'm not sure how many techniques she shows in here. Like image trash. You probably wouldn't show the exact same thing. Here's contact paper shapes. She wouldn't have the exact same thing she had in her first book. But here is printing with one color. She's doing mono printing. Anyway, so if you if you like you know different printing techniques and collage, she does a lot of really good basic stuff and then with her and her style. Put your link in, Jamie. Put your link in. So anyway, I just pulled these off because we were talking about collage in this book and wanted to um, <clears throat> wanted to address different kind of transfers. So there's that one. Okay, now the sun's coming out. I gotta close this window. Okay, so the last book that I want to talk about is, and, the, and this one's shiny, so it's going to have a glare. Let's bring this book back out to prop it up. The Art of Creative Watercolor. I need some coffee. <clears throat> my coffee's cold and my voice is going. So, again, I got this off of Amazon. And Danielle Donaldson, she has a, I think I have her other book too. She has another book out. And she's she's been around on, She I think she used to do a lot of blogging. It's been a while, again, it's been a while um, since I followed her and closely anyway. Thank you, Terry. Terry is always good about popping those links in. The Inspiration and Techniques for Imaginative Drawing and Painting. What got me with this one, even though it's I don't really do watercolor. I mean, we all do a little bit of watercolor, but we're all not painting full-on paintings like, say, Jean is. Um, but I like the color. I like the colors. I don't know. There's something about the... And again, I couldn't see inside the book. I got it off of Amazon. So you're going to get to see a little bit more of it here. All right, The Art of Creative Watercolor, Inspiration and Techniques for Imaginative Drawing and Painting. It's by Northlight, Danielle Donaldson. And um, you use image transfers onto canvases. Oh, okay, what kind, which kind of image transfer, Bunny? What, which process, I mean, did you do a gel medium? 
or a you know a tape kind of the kind I just showed because you can do gel me we've done that here a couple times it, and it's, it's a little iffy too I think the packing tape you can almost always get a magazine image the gel medium where you take gel medium and you slather it and you trans you're transferring a, with the gel medium it's a little trickier and it's usually not very exact and again it's going to depend on the image and the ink but it has a cool distressed look yeah Eileen Jean had to run to the store so she said she'd watch this later now I gotta say though this is probably not stuff that Jean well maybe there's some stuff in here Jean you know does her landscapes but any see there again guys any kind of book you can pull from you can pull the techniques the creativity the eye candy the inspiration from anything you know I mean I'm not a musician he he's a musician you're gonna find um, you can find inspiration from just because you don't do watercolor which I do very little of I mean I've done a few paintings in watercolor and you know I use it in I use my watercolor and neo colors and stuff in our color booking processes and stuff but it uh, doesn't mean that you can't you know use different techniques in whatever style or medium you're using you can still you know pull and this is why Pacola is going to make me name this one a society of idea collectors I think we're on 31 I think um, Let's see. I think this is Society will be Society Idea Collector number 31. Plus book it'll be a book haul and I'll attach Society Idea Collectors. Because she made me put Society Idea Collectors on two of my other videos. <laughs> Thanks, Pacola. Um so anyway, she has a very whimsical colorful style again all all books like this especially like north light teaching books they're going to have supplies what you need tools you know all that stuff kinds of brushes and these are all painted look these are all i'm assuming that they're painted by uh, uh, danielle donaldson they're these are all hand painted little brushes and her style kind of reminds me of Margil Bastine. Marge, I think that's her. And I think that book is downstairs on my bookshelf. I don't think I have that up here. Um, it, she was a Hallmark artist card lady. And she has, a, I have a book by her. Margil, Margil Bastine. Her style kind of reminds me of that. Of course, it's watercolor, so they're all going to be kind of similar, you know, in, in that sense. Watercolors look. Uh, supplies, uh, creative essentials, workspace, solutions for your time and energy are va valuable, creative process. So there's a lot more. See, all this is all valuable information. If you get a book like this, don't just go like to the step outs or step by step or yeah north lights awesome they've been around forever too lynn yeah uh, organized practice tape bound watercolor pad daily practice she talks about your daily practice has the, uh, the supplies your ideas um and then different little tips that you can use like sewing scraps or adding washi tape uh, trim your collage you know different you know different little tips and things handmade journals altered books um and uh color practice and look how she made like a swatch book like see that's like fabric right there it's like a fabric swatch book that she made into this golden book from a golden book thanks eileen yeah there's her web she has a website thanks eileen i knowing eileen she's probably taking a class with her have you taken a class with her, Eileen, if she has classes? Loose leaf portfolios, ABC practice. So, and we've talked about some of these um, using, uh, you know, have, it, you know, your, in our society idea collector where we have the alphabet, we have lists, we combine lists, we have lists based on the alphabet, we have lists based on color, we have mind map color, we have mind mapped words, and she has just some ABC practice things like 
E is for elephants, J is for jars, you know, things like that. So that if you need some inspiration, where to start, where to practice daily, she talks about that. Organized practice, inspiration blocks, um, a store, how to, she's just working on a clipboard here, recipe cards, file sorter, all kinds of things like this. It's all, it's all can connect, guys. Everything you learn from here, you can learn with us, you can from what we've taught here, you're gonna, you can combine with other things. That's why you need your Society of Idea Collector notebook. I can't stress it enough. You need a notebook. Even if it's a traveler's notebook, which I have, you know, I have a few traveler's notebooks I keep ideas in. And then I have our huge three ring binders. I have at least two of those for ideas. And I have some are in, here, you know, like this. Collect your ideas in a notebook. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that huge of a three ring binder, but to me, if you're doing mind mapping, listing, combinations, color combinations, idea combinations, you need, you know, and it's just cheap notebook paper, or, you know, it, it's not the line paper. I like unlined paper, but you can use whatever. To collect your ideas, you have to collect your ideas in some form or fashion. They're not going to stay in your head. You know, I'm telling you, people. <laughs> You need a Society of Idea Collectors notebook of some kind, whether it's a Traveler's, a Three Ring, you know, anything. Just some place where you write down your ideas. Okay, uh, and then she has some different uh, watercoloring techniques, glazing, graded transition of watercolors, uh, practicing. Um, here's some grids. If y'all have not seen Paula, a journal artista, she has done tons of lines, swatches, and grids of watercolor that are so cool. They are so cool. So if y'all have not seen Paula's uh, watercolor um, combinations, they're really, really cool. Uh, here's where that she used a paint chip exercise. I think she's making her own paint chips here. Just that they look just like paint chips, but they're with watercolor swatches, and she's bound them together with um, some pretty ribbons. You know, if you want color combinations, you can cut up your. Um, here, let me get my little lanyard of color chips and ideas. If you want to put your ideas on color chips, <laughs> um, color chips of paper. These are um, all the basil cardstock chips that, uh, when they used to sell those. But th for me, it's not about the paper. It's not about the paper colors. It's about the color. So I've got all these color chips, but you can start collecting, you know, paint chips and color, you know, paint chip strips. We've done that in our, um, our color combination notebooks. I won't get those out right now, but uh, we have color combination notebooks so that you uh, can combine colors, collect your colors, use design-seeds.com, design-seeds.com for a daily, I think two a day, color combinations. They look like paint chips and they're all different color combinations. Here's different things we've done with um, over the years, colors, techniques. Uh, arty purposes n and then the nouns of words so that you can just pull a word this is just an example you can use a dictionary you don't have to have it on a ring but um, just to make it fun so here's all you know my color common anyway you can do this with all different kinds of things so let's put this back up uh, make your own paint chips make your own swatches um, so I think this is really clever. I don't think I've ever seen anybody make their own paint chips like that. That's cool. Um, you have the Stampin' Up! color cards, Lynette? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are the basil ones. So anyway, there's another idea. 
and then different comp how to do compositions, different theme, how to do different com uh, compositions, different studies, do's and don'ts, color balance, scale, layering, you know, different things. Now here is where the eye candy comes in. And it's it's pretty light as is. I mean, it really is a light, light colors, but it's a not quite as light as that. So let me see if I can adjust. Okay, that's pretty true to color right there. So what she's done, like A is for art supplies, and she's painted all these art supplies. And this is what reminds me of Marjol Bastine. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. She would paint all her, her all her art supplies. Does anybody remember Marjol? Marjol Bastine? She'd have all these, and they were sold at Hallmark. She had little animals, and she'd have all her art supplies combined with her paintings. Anyway, um, so it kind of reminds, has that feel to me. Um, I have a sketchbook with pages colored of books and products I use. Yeah, exactly. Any kind of thing, any kind of thing that you collect your ideas in. And it doesn't have to be paint. It could be, even if you just wrote out the colors. Like we did our mind mapping with one color. Which book did I put that in now? Which, which one of my, my, which one of my Society of Idea Collectors books is that? In this one, I think it's in this one. This is one of my other Society of Idea Collector notebooks where we have our ideas. This one I've decorated up with my um, uh, rag flag uh, <laughs> and different types of uh, paper clips. But let's see here. It's huge, so let's see. Let me get to. Is this the one or is it the other one? I got another one. Hang on. I have another. I have all my notebooks here of different techniques and different ideas. It might be in this one. Here is... Okay. There's another one. Again, I've decorated it up with different things here. All right, so let's look in this one. Yeah, okay. So here we go. So this is where I, I threw in. And you can put them in it. I mean, I've just got multiple uh, three-ring binders. And I have them divided up by topics. And this is our weekly thing. I mean, um, yeah, our weekly thing, 52 weeks, which, yeah. But don't tell me. I'm behind on that. Um, <laughs> so here was our sample thing of doing mind mapping out your colors. Take your basic colors and write out everything you can think. And you can look it up online and fill it out just as easy. I mean, fill out a sample. Do it your own things. But what I'm saying is if you don't know blue things, you can always just Google blue things and find things. But that's not using your imagination. Um, do that after you can't think of anything else. And so this is just the things we thought of. I could Google blue things that are blue and find hundreds more things that are blue but in these that we did here I think we did a video on these I think welcome back Jean we're just now getting into the watercolor book but we took a rabbit trail big surprise there right um, <laughs> and just make you a circle and color and I just use my uh, you know my Crayola super tip markers to color it in and, and write out every single thing you can think of that's blue. I mean, we have the cookie monster, <laughs> the handicap sign, uh, blueberries, butterflies, bluebirds, blue jay, a peacock, a bird egg, a f there's blue fish, blue jeans, um, a swimming pool, whales, the Twitter bird, uh, you know, so uh, sapphires. So anything that you can think of that's blue. And you'll start to expand your imagination. These are the kind of things that people that say, oh, I don't have an imagination. Yes, you do. You're just not using it. No pity. <laughs> so here we did yellow. Uh, and then we started breaking it out on the who, what, where, why, when, and how. But uh, orange, red, pink, purple, teal, lime, green, gray, black, white, and peach, and brown. So we did all those. We did all those, um, we did just, and that's just basic ones. And again, you can use, um, you can Google more, I, more things, 
But then what you want to do is make a list of those things. And once you have list of, let's just say you have a list of blue things and a list of yellow things. Then I, we used to take three things. We would take three different things. We would take like lime, lavender, and lemon, you know, things like that in our in our uh, combination color combination book. And we'd take three things, and then you'd go from your list. Everything that you had written down is blue. Bluebird cookie monster, a handicap sign, everything that's in blue. Yellow. You'd have maybe. You know, the, the little candy peeps that are yellow. Sunflowers. You know, and you'd have a list of yellow. Then you'd have a list of, you know, lavender things or whatever. And you'd pick one thing from each list. You could do it randomly. You could close your eyes and pick them. Or you could number them and just pick random three random numbers. And then combine those three things. Combine those, that yellow, that blue, and that lavender, whatever, the three, any, it's not the color itself that matters. It's the, you know, just a random combination. So you'd have three colors and three items that were those three colors, and you'd have to combine them in some way. Either making a story with them, like you could have the, the little Easter candy peeps with the bluebird in the sky with lavender flowers. Or you could be more creative and have a yellow peep with blue wings from the bluebird flying, you see what I'm saying, in a, in a lavender sky. So there's just different ways that you can do combinations like that. And so we got off on that because of color combinations. <laughs> okay, so anyway, again, she starts off here with some art supplies. And A is for art supplies. So then she talks about all the different things of how to study, how to gather references, practice easy objects. Uh, and, and then she gives you some little step outs here. She's using some butterflies. And she's using a Posca. Look at there, people. The white Posca pen. Our favorite. Um, then so just some mason jars. And then, then look, here's blue. So now everything that she has in this is blue. So she's painted all these different things that are blue. And you can do this too. It doesn't have to just be art supplies. It can be anything that is blue. Um, something that popped up on my uh, Facebook feed. Hang on, let me look and see if it's still there. I don't know if I kept it. It was in my uh, memories. Let's see. Did I keep it? Um, in my Facebook memories, it may be gone, or I might have not. I might have deleted it. Anyway, I did a, a thing about. I think it was in 2003, 13 or no, 14. Had to be one before I started uploading to YouTube because it was from UStream. Anyway, so back in UStream, I didn't put it on Facebook. Uh, re re put it up. It was from some years ago. And what we had done is we had taken all our art supplies that was that color. And kind of like when she's got different things here too. She's got little boats and other things that are blue. But we would take all our art supplies that were that color. Like everything that was red. We take our marker, a palette knife, our, and this isn't red, but you know, red paint. Uh, we take our inks. And everything that was red, and we and photograph it, and then and or draw it, and uh, collect all your things, art supplies that were in that color, and then trying to use them. But anyway, we won't get off track. Well, we're already off track. Let's get it back on track. <laughs> so anyway, so she's got everything blue. Here she has C is for chairs and couches. So then she has a whole bunch of chairs and couches. And then she gives you a little step-by-step -step on how to paint a chair or a couch. So it's so is eye candy to me. Look at this. I mean, it's just eye candy, right? <laughs> Whether you watercolor or not, just, you know, it's just inspiring to see. Here she has some different fabric combinations that she's just sewn into 
maybe into a book. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Uh, some fabric swatches. And again, guys, if you do not know how to color combine, design-seeds.com every day gives you color combination. You, I think they have an Instagram. Well, I know they do. Let me see here. Um, and I don't know how well it's going to show up on my phone, but let me go here. Uh, if you don't want to get an email every day, you can. And I don't even know if they do the emails anymore. I just I just go to their site, and uh, here let's see, search, design, dash, seeds. Okay, so on on uh, Instagram, it's all one word: design seeds. Okay, if you go to their website, it's design-seeds.com. But on Instagram, just go to Design Seeds. And, and they have color swatches, combinations, and a photograph using those colors every day. Well, I don't know if they post on Instagram every day. They do on their website every day. So you can see, like, here's all these blues. Here's, and they have multiple combinations. Like, here's some lavenders and blues. See, can y'all see that? Yeah, it is Eileen. Um, here's some grays and yellows and blues and some oranges. So if you don't, if you can't, if you're stuck for color combinations, go on their website or Instagram and see, look, they have a gray, a peach, a salmon, a purple, a dark purple, and a forest green. You may not ever think those colors, but look how they're, all these colors are in this photograph that they use. So if you're stuck for color combinations, just go follow them on Instagram or on their site. And on their site, they have many more drop-down boxes, color combinations. You can put in colors, like you can put in green and blue, and, it, and it'll generate, it'll show you that photograph that combination that they have where on Instagram you just have the pictures right so like the yellow a teal a dark gray a fuchsia a pink and a pale pink see isn't that awesome so there's and there's all kinds of you know I just use that's the one I like design seeds but there's there's other ones too I mean uh, the paint chip people um, uh, you know, the paint, um, oh, I'm not thinking of the names of the paint companies right now, but the ones that put out the paint chips, they have different combinations on their sites. They're more generated to or geared toward um, uh, interior decorating, whereas design seeds are like pulled off of photograph combinations. So anyway, yeah, more, more fabric. So it's just, look here, look at all the greens. G is for green. So all kinds of things in green. Little birds, rocks. And again, there's the, there's pretty much the color right there. It is a, it is kind of a faded color. It's watercolor, right? Um, and then how to do some little animals. How to, Different things in green. And then here's all different kind of household items. It's just really cute book. I mean, just everything in it. So even if you didn't do little pansies, like here's some little purple pansies, some little purple bears, you know, you, you, you just get the ideas, the inspiration, the techniques, right? And then here's some of our little funky little people. I think that's what her other book was on. Is that what it was, Eileen? Her, she has a book on little, little uh, whimsical people, I think. But again, in this one, she's addressing color and water, watercolor and color. But she has a lot of step outs, and here's oranges, words, words. And I did notice this at uh, when I went to Barnes and Noble. I mean, I've always done calligraphy, so you know, words have always been, you know, same thing for Janet. We've always done like calligraphy lettering words fonts and that kind of thing but you know with the um with the re coming out of brush lettering that's you know with the markers and things that you can do brush lettering with re 
I don't want to say refound. What am I thinking of? But brush lettering becoming popular <laughs> again. Um, there's a lot of lettering books out now. New lettering books. You know, I just showed you the one we got a couple weeks ago on the hundred day. Here. This one, hundred days of lettering. So if you want a challenge to do lettering for a hundred days, different kinds of lettering fonts, whether it's hand drawn, brush lettering, you know, drawing your own letters, which that's, you know, that's pretty much what lettering is, you know, hand drawing. But they give you spaces to draw every day for a hundred days. So if you're interested in more lettering, then this is, this is one of the newest ones that I've seen out. Although the, I saw a couple other ones, but Janet, I resisted and did not buy. It is, it is Eileen. Yeah. So Eileen said that it's, her other book is on a people. I think I have it, but I haven't. I didn't look for it before the show. Q is for quotes. So using your quotes and lettering, all you see can combine it all. Whether you do brush lettering or if you just hand write the words. So if you don't think you can do the hand lettering with the brush markers and the brush pens, then take your. Um, take your just take a pencil I'll do it in I'll do it in dark but lightly you know lightly like let's just do a big Eileen here a big E uh, lightly um, again I'm doing it dark so it shows up on camera here but draw out your letters lightly and then watercolor them in so that you you can do things like this and you can do it in pencil so that you can erase and fix it and all that before you watercolor it. So, you know, draw it in pencil so that um, you can do any kind of lettering with, with watercolor. Um, and again, guys, there's just tons of information on every page. I'm not covering all the techniques and stuff she talks about. Here, look, there she's, she's watercoloring some lettering. But it's an awesome book. I mean, you got to get it. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, so look at all the red inspiration. And then here's some flowers and rainbows. And then here's some, uh, like, teal colors. And again, I love all her fabric swatches and things on the side. See? Unicorn. So she has a little unicorn step out. How to do the little unicorn so you can practice with her step outs but then go further than that don't just try I mean it's great to practice this with her her examples but after you do that then go find your own stuff to draw you know know what I mean Vern So anyway, look at all the yellow. It's just eye candy, people. I'm telling you. And her little animals. There's her picture right there. There she is. And her name is Danielle Donaldson. And I know she has at least one other whimsical character book or faces. Maybe it's faces and characters. But this is her new one, The Art of Creative Watercolor. You can get it on Amazon. Little monkey heard your voice and woke up. Aw, aw. I'll tell her, give her a good morning hug. Don't give her any coffee yet, <laughs> Galena. <laughs> That's so sweet. Galena's new little baby. Well, she's about, what, three, four months old now, Galena? She heard my voice. She's being indoctrinated into videos and learning people's voices on videos, Galena. <laughs> She's going to be saying soon, Mom, I need an ASMR moment. I need an ASMR moment, Mom. <laughs> anyway, so there's the books that we talked about today. The Art of, um, the Art of Creative Watercolor, Danielle Donaldson. The Collage Ideas Workbook. Think Like an Artist. And then from last week, I showed this one, but I mean, we talked about it again today. Create, uh, Creative Quest by Questlove. And then um, talked about the two books by uh, Claudine Helmet that are old from 2013, I mean 2003 and 2005, I think. 
so uh, because of the uh, packing tape and the different transfers and that so these are the new ones I got and once again guys the Baker's dozen I did go through and colored this one still needs some gold on it but colored all the St. Nick's and all the cookies except one I missed I missed a cookie <laughs> there it is I missed this cookie right there and uh, again talk to I'll, I'll repeat this real quick I talked to um, the art of uh, the author the artist is Wendy Edelson and the stories by Aaron Shepard and I messaged him to find out information that of the questions you guys asked uh, dun, 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 dun. to answer your questions and he did say I could read the book so next time I color in it I will be reading the book as well to answer your questions the colored samples on the back are Wendy's watercolor illustrations that are actually published in her picture book in her illustrated picture book for kids these are her actual watercolors shrunk down of course you know but these are her watercolors that were published in our picture book and it is also available on Amazon um, and the, the, they are the paintings that he converted to grayscale for the coloring book and this is kind of how he shows how he did it here's the original here and he converted it into grayscale for the coloring book and this is also her original watercolor painting but it's faded I'm reading his his information but it's faded from full color to just gray scale so that it shows that it's a coloring book he said maybe I didn't do it obvious enough well I think he did but I think what our question was was this her paintings or you know that was more the question than anything and for how long it took Wendy she he said that she he knows that she worked on the paintings for over off and on for over a year using live models she does have a Facebook group Wendy Edelson studio on Facebook so if you want to follow her and he said you could ask her your own questions she did comment on the the I you know, only posted just a, a smidgen of the piece that I colored last week and uh, this right here and, and I posted it on Instagram and Wendy did comment on it so that was nice and um, and then the the paper on the illustrate on the illustrations themselves have a gray coating to the back that helps prevent bleed through but you still cannot use here's where we did it with the Copic you can, still can't use a Copic marker that's just common sense we all know you can't you know alcohol based markers are going to go through but we did a little test there um, so yeah so that was uh, what Aaron's comments answered my questions for me from you guys the questions you had um, I he didn't say but she probably does on her Facebook page or if you want to ask her go on her Facebook page and ask her what the original size of these are maybe she says I haven't looked um, the original size of her watercolor paintings that she did for the children's book so again he did say I can read the book so next time I color in it I'll probably just read the book as well okay so that is the end of this this is a going on two hours here guys um, if y'all have any questions or anything I thought maybe we maybe y'all did y'all want to do a little demo out of this um, I don't want to do a you know big old you know big old project but I thought maybe if wanted to do, just do a little sample or something and of course I'm sure she's probably using oh let's see I didn't read that exactly and she may not say exactly what brand of watercolors she's using let's see here supplies she may let's see watercolor paper watercolor paints I began painting with two watercolors in high school and college but have since discovered that pan watercolors pack an equal color filled punch and have an added benefit of portability so yeah so she has different ones she has the tube ones here and she does say that the pan ones you know and I'm sure you, you use what you got you know um, but it's you know just to practice a little let's just 
find one little thing here. Let's see, I don't want to do a whole demo, but I just want to show that you can, and here she, I can tell she's uses salt right there. See that, that's a salt technique. <laughs> so anyway, she's got uh, these little mermaids. Should we do one of our little mermaids? Now she's got salt. I don't have, uh, uh, you need, I think you need rock salt or um, sea salt rather to do the salt technique in watercolor. Where's Jean? It, I, I used, I've done that before, but it was way, way, way years ago. I just still don't have my sea salt from 25 years ago, <laughs> you know, or whatever it was that I, you know, uh, you, you can get this look with salt. You drop some salt in your um, watercolor and it gives you that, you know, molly effect there so I don't want to do something that we can't really duplicate but let's just do a little here let's just do a little demo real quick just a little something something before we go um, let's see let me have a piece of watercolor paper or something here um, just get a sheet of watercolor out of this pad and it's just, uh, it's a, it would be a um, hot press because it's smooth. I'm not sure what kind she used. I just picked it this out of my pad of watercolor. And we're just going to do a little quick little demo. I'll use, uh, I'll use my Jane Davenport. So I don't know which colors I'm going to need. So I'll get my little Jane Davenport out. And then I think in the next video... Um, I don't know if we want to do one today. What time is 11? 12. I probably won't do this today. We'll do this maybe next time I do Altered Book. Eileen sent me this little um, cube, earth cube, and I want to do some little altered things in this. So this will be fun. Maybe I'll just take one minute to do a little something something on here uh, just to show you. <laughs> we'll pick one out of there. But let's just quickly do, and I'll just use a watercolor brush, a pencil. We're not going to do anything fancy. If I can find a pencil. I think it's in the, I think my pen, oh, here we go. Here's a pencil. And we'll just draw a little cute little mermaid girl. <laughs> okay, so um, she has a little, she has kind of a little, I'm just going to kind of do a, my own kind of little version of it. I'm not trying to copy it. So I'm not tracing it or anything. She has little eyes here, little nose. And then it looks like she has some kind of a fishnet thing coming, flying behind her. And then, um, and I know you probably can't see this, but I can't do, if I do it dark, then the watercolor, you know, you'll see it. And you don't want to see your pencil. She has a little little neck here and this little body. Let me just kind of sketch her out. And we know our uh, Zandra loves mermaids, and our Zandra will be back uh, from Australia. She's taking the uh, she's taking a what do you call it a workshop with Jane Davenport. I think that's this week. She'll be back Wednesday. Xandra will be back Wednesday. She used use the pages as collage. Oh, use it as collage too? I don't know. I might just want to work in this the book, Eileen. We'll see. Okay, then she has the you know mermaid body here. And then the fishtail thing. I'm just going to kind of do a random similar little sketch there I made mine have she's mine has a little bit more hips <laughs> and you really want to draw really light if you're going to use you know watercolor and pencil you know because you want to be able to either erase it or not see it so you know keep it as light as you can so you probably can barely see my pencil sketch and then she kind of has a net look she kind of has a net um, like this might be like she's holding up a net, like she got out of a net, or some netting. I'm just gonna, and I made mine fatter, so we'll just go with this. Okay, so just draw a little mermaid. <laughs> she has little buttons and little details. She has some like. Um, 
You could do little, she doesn't have scales on hers, but you could do little scales. You know. I'll just put a few. So I think everybody needs this book. Even if you don't watercolor, you just need the book. So I just had a couple of little scales on there. <laughs> See, it's traveling on Wednesday. Thanks, Janet. And Janet, is Eileen going to boss you around? I mean, suggest what you do today on your show. <laughs> uh, I hope. Okay, so she has skinny little arms here. We'll see what we can do with that. Okay. That's just about as detailed as I'm going to get with, with the drawing. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to open up my, um, what I usually do is I open up my um, cases and I spray them with water. And of course, I'm not going to spray them right here. I'm going to spray them off to the side. I don't know which ones have which colors I want to use, so I'm just going to get them all wet. Why not? And they're just, a, these are just the Jane Davenport sets. She has three sets out. You can find them on Amazon and on websites and whoops, come back here, water bottle. So, yeah, just spray them all. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I will, let's just start with, now on hers, she has the white of the paper. She doesn't even have the mermaid, um, doesn't even have it colored in. It's just white. All right, but let's see here. I'm going to, I'm going to get her little hair wet going to wet it and just do a little wet and wet and I'm not even going to try to match exactly the colors I'm going to have her give her some pink hair so I'm just touching the red I mean the, the hot pink to the wet paper the wet and wet paper and I do have to have a Kleenex because I want to get excess pigment off and then kind of smear it around because I want it to look like watercolory right she has these like three little bun little bun heads <laughs> And um, as it dries, you can go in and add more. And she has white Posca. The white Posca dots, you probably can't see that, but we saw that earlier. Okay, and then let's do her little her little top here. Oh, again, let me, hang on. I want to wet it first so that it moves. <clears throat> kind of a little yellow ochre, kind of. top and then her whoops didn't clean my brush I'm gonna wet the wet her fins or her tail I'm trying to squeeze out water don't do that don't over squeeze your water brush and then we're gonna do like maybe a blue and a green so let's take let's take some of this blue and maybe a little of that. Let's kind of make it a blue green here. And then so we're gonna add some blue. A little bit of blue down there, and then some green. I'm just picking up some things off here, there, and here, and then add a little bit of green. I'll hold it up here. I kind of want to keep it far enough away so you can see the whole thing. A little bit more green. So I'm just going to add some green in there. You can add more water if you want to keep it very light. Okay. And then let's do a different color. She has it in a blue. Let's do it in a um, yellow maybe or lighter green let's do it in green all right so all right so now I'm gonna wet I have a little green still on my brush let's do a little gotta be careful not to touch the other parts because it will move you know it's watercolor And then put the green 
netting. And we'll go in here with some detail in a minute. Let's move this around a little. Okay, Lynn. Two new ceramic dishes. Oh, okay, Jean. So what are you streaming up for? Jean says she got two new ceramic dishes for her watercolor. I wasn't sure if you were done with your uh, getting everything back together in your house from your yard sale. So I wasn't sure if you were streaming today. I'll wait and see if you answer because I know there's a lag. So let's put this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry. Let me dry this. You're screaming at four? Okay. And again, oh, wait a minute. For anybody that missed um, this morning, that's a little still a little wet. Um, Ustream is uh, there will be no more free Ustream as of August 1st. So me and some of the others will be moving over to YouTube Live because yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> but we do appreciate Ustream letting us use their platform for eight years. We've been, str I mean, I don't know how long Ustream has been, uh, uh, but w the, the, all of us artists that we all know in our group have been doing it for eight years, seven, eight years. And so we appreciate you Ustream for all of that. Okay, so now I'm going to take, I'll take a little of the blue, I think. And I'm going to go, let's see if I got that thin enough. I'm going to go over the lines, the net. Like, is this like a net? I'm not sure. Or just, you know. Got to have this dry, though, before you can put, like, lines and stuff on here. Because otherwise it'll just bleed out, right? And I still can see where I didn't get everything perfectly dry. But just doing a little sample from her book. So y'all make sure at least go peruse the book because it's really awesome. I think for eye candy and ideas, even if you don't, um, even if you don't do watercolor, I'm just kind of quickly doing a little net thing here. Oh, you like the colors? Okay. And then we can go back in with a little more blue green. I'm just mixing some blues and greens right here and do more details like our, that are on her little self there. A few little lines and or some um, she didn't have scales on hers but I think little scales would be cute on a little mermaid. Just a few. And again she does she is I haven't read her technique yet, but it just looks like she's shaded a little bit on the skin. I'm not sure what, with what, because I haven't read it. So we'll just do that with pencil, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's dry. I guess you could do it with pen. We'll do it with pen so it shows up. I'll just use a Sharpie pen. So it shows up. So you can just do a little. And you could do as much or as little of the pen detail. I'm not sure if she used pen or just a dark pencil. But I'm going to use pen so it shows up. Give her a little belly button. And you could also go in here on the, you know, do the scales. or And you can do the pen on top of the watercolor. Just make sure it's dry. 
I'm just going to put that in here real quick. I'm not being neat. I'm not trying to do a painting. I'm just trying to give a little demo for you guys. She has a little, kind of a little shell something around her waist, maybe. Isn't it cute? Okay, Jean. I'm getting ready to leave, so, yeah. So, just did a little. Here's her little... Okay, and then you could always do more, um, you know, you can do more. And also, let's get the Posca. You could do some, let's just put some white little details on her. scales so you can just use whatever just use it as inspiration so you can put you can put white <laughs> she's just kind of cute put some little curls in her hair white curls you could go around her little buttons on her shirt you could go in here and you know add more details on the fishnet or whatever so yeah isn't it cute so I think what I'm gonna do with this is hang on I should probably do it in pencil first. You probably won't be able to see this, but hang on. Let me let me think for a second. You probably can't read it, but hang on. Now, let me get my brush or a brush pen. Let's see. I don't know if that's thick enough. Maybe. It doesn't have to be too thick. Okay, so now I'm going to take my brush pen. And I'm going to, let me test, well, let me do a test. Let's see if this is going to be, if I can get enough thick and thins. Okay, maybe. It probably should be, hmm, maybe I should do it, because that's not very thick. Maybe I should do it with, let's try. I can always go back over it. So, because I want it thick and thin. Yes, yeah, so I need to do it thicker and thinner, but I'm going to just go with this right now because it's our live something for somebody. And you'll see in just a second. And I'll thicken up some of the lines with a thicker pen. Or I can just do a double with this.
So if y'all did not know, our Eileen lost her mom. We call her E-T-E-E, -E, Eileen the Enabler Elf. She lost her mom. So I'm going to send this to our little Eileen from all of us. So I will, I will fix the lettering nice and pretty. I'll just hand do it rather than try to brush letter it. So Eileen, you are in our thoughts and our, in our prayers while you are recovering from your loss. So this is from all of us, Eileen. Because we love you. So I'll, f I'll go through it and take my time. And this can be our little sympathy, our sympathy card for you, Eileen. You're welcome. We love you. So I'm guessing you and Janet are going to stream. So I will leave a little early. I'm going to check on Hubster and getting the uh, car fixed, or the truck rather, so we can get the emissions. And I'll try to be over there shortly. See what you two are up to, which I'm sure will be no good. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. And again, this is the Art of Creative Watercolor, Danielle Donaldson. And I hope you all enjoyed the little book haul idea collector society of idea collector episode and um yeah so we will see you are you going to do the best to be nice to her today janet oh <laughs> okay you're welcome guys thanks for watching and thanks everybody on youtube um i'm i'm like just a couple short of, of my twenty thousand over there so thank you so much and we'll be doing a giveaway probably on wednesday